Alright, what's going on guys? So we're back here with another book review. Uh, today we're going to be looking at this book over here. Uh, the Peterson Guide to Freshwater Fishes, North of Mexico. So this was the first ever identification book that I got. And I was really, really excited when I got it. Uh, however, after I got it, I was a little disappointed. Uh, mainly because this is the second edition. And the second edition is already, at this point, well over 10 years old. So the second edition was first published in 2011. The first edition was first published in 1991. And essentially a lot of these books, really all these books, they're outdated almost as soon as they're published. Because they go to print and then scientists are constantly either finding new species, splitting species from other species, uh, combining two species that used to be two different species into one species. Uh, the ranges extend or the ranges uh, get smaller of these fish. So basically almost as soon as these go to print, they're already outdated. And this book is now well over 10 years old, so there's a lot of new species that are out there that are not found in this book. However, this is still the best book if you're just going to get one book uh, for all the freshwater fishes that you can catch uh, in the U.S. So let me just read you like a quick little excerpt from the back that's kind of, it's probably going to um, better explain what I just said. Uh, so it says, there are over 1,000 species of freshwater fish in North America, north of Mexico, and identifying them can be a daunting task. In fact, in just the 20 years since publication of the first edition of Peterson Guide to Freshwater Fishes, the number of species has risen by 141. And it goes on from there. So in the 20 years between the first edition and uh, when this second edition went to print for the first time, there were 141 new species found. And I don't know how many have been found since then, but again, this book doesn't have those in it. So it's still the best book when you're looking um, over over the entire country. Um, more specifically though, if you want to get really in-depth, you probably want to get the specific book for that state. Like I had a couple, I did a review on uh, this book here, The Freshwater Fishes of Florida. I got one for uh, Illinois, and I'm probably going to pick up a couple more as I start fishing more and more states. But if you're just going to get one book, this is still probably the best one to go with. Uh, what I would like to do now is kind of hop inside the book and kind of show you some of the uh, more detailed, finer points, and how I like to use this book. Alright, so let's go ahead and jump uh, to the inside of Peterson Guide to Freshwater Fish Fishes of North America, North of Mexico. Uh, I'm going to show you just a couple of the things. I'm not going to waste a whole lot of time with some of the more boring things. The first thing I wanted to show you was page, or like I guess the preface, uh, I believe it's 16 right here. So like basically any identification book I've seen, it tells you what to look for in some of the uh, fish because a lot of them are really, really similar. So you might have to know uh, how to differentiate two similar species based on uh, some things. So there's some very basic things like pelvic fin, belly, first dorsal, second dorsal. It gets to uh, some more uh, detailed aspects of the fish. So like lateral um, scales above the lateral line. There's your scales along the lateral line. Uh, you've got your gill rakers here. So some species you have to be able to like count the gill rakers or the scales along the lateral line. Some very detailed um, measurements need to be taken to make sure you can identify the fish properly. Um, also this is something that really helped me out a lot. Uh, how to count uh, rays and spines. So this is really simple because it kind of just shows you there's 20 here. Uh, and you have to count the uh, origin of the spine. So if you look, uh, I guess out here kind of branches out into two, but you count the spine as one because there is one there at the base. And then over here, uh, if you look, even though you can see several, and I guess these aren't spines, these are more rays, but over here there's several rays, even though there's several, it still counts as one because these two small ones don't count. So you start counting the first one that goes all the way down. So this is something that uh, I learned I guess somewhat recently, within the last couple of years, uh, I started tr trying to take better pictures because after the fact, a lot of these species, you got to really, really get into the details like this to be able to identify them, especially like some of the shiners that maybe we'll talk about in a little bit. But if we keep going, we're going to get into the actual identification part of fish. So the, um, the beginning has all these families of fish. It's going to have all the common names and scientific names and then some details on how to identify them. And then it's gonna have these pictures with some little arrows pointed to 
the key marks on how to differentiate between these different species. So uh, these are going to be some of the Neutropus metals, which I absolutely hate identifying because as you can see, all of these look, at least to me, <laughs> identical. Uh, you got to really get into the details to be able to differentiate like the coastal and the wheat shiner and whatnot. This book does do a pretty good job in helping out with that because if we just read like the description of the black, uh, black chin shiner, black chin shiner, there we go. Black stripe extends around the uh, short pointed snout then tells you to look at figure 30 and what did it say there? Black striped often has a zigzag appearance on side. So if you look at the black chin, it kind of points to that zigzag appearance on the black stripe, which some of these other shiner species do not have, even though they do have black stripes. So what I do somewhat like about this book is it has these pictures all on one page, and they're all grouped by family. So here we got some more minnows, all, all once again in the Neutropus genus. So you can see them all next to each other, and you can see and read the differences and similarities between them, but you then have to go to a different page to see some other stuffs, other stuff. Uh, so let's just go ahead and jump into that. So let's say page 274 to learn about the black chin. So now you got to go to page 274, which is way over here. And then you're going to get uh, range maps for both. So this is the black chin range map here. And then it's going to once again give you some identifying marks. And then each one is also going to give you the range, so where they're found, you can see those on the map. Uh, it's going to give you the habitat and some similar species to what to look for. And then in a, in a lot of the really, really similar ones, kind of like these, it's going to give you some even better details over here. I just, again, don't really like how they're black and white, and they're not all black and white. So if we head back over to the beginning section, I had another one picked out, the, uh, the darters, because I think the darters look really cool. Um... Okay, so some darters are in black and white like these guys here, and I'm not sure why that is, because not all of them are black and white. So again, black and white darters, and some of them are colored. So this is a very interesting, I guess, um, editor's choice on why some of them are black and white and some of them are colorful. I think it would look a whole lot nicer if they were all colorful like this. Um, but yeah, so once again, we got our darters. You can see the pictures, you can see the arrows pointing to the differences between them, and you could read about them. So let's just go green side darter because it's on top of the page. Uh, has five to, uh, five to eight green W's or U's or bars um, on the side. So let's go green side, which is right here. And you can see the arrow pointing to those W's or U's or whatever. And then if we see what page you can get more information on, it looks like that is 542. And this is the annoying part because you got to go back and forth. Uh, let's go to 542. That's 541. And 542. Where's the green? Oh, green side darter. So it, it does get annoying because you got to flip back and forth. A lot of the other books, or actually all the other books I've seen, all the information is on one page. So it is annoying to flip back and forth. But like I mentioned, I also do like how... You can just very easily see the, all the different pictures uh, right next to each other like that. So I guess it does have some positives and negatives because you can see the differences really easily when you're looking at the fish. But it's also annoying because then you got to flip all the way back. This is, isn't even the page I was on earlier. But anyway, so that's basically the structure of the book. We have all the pictures of all the fish uh, here in the front. Some are black and white, some are not. And then through the rest of the book, we have the range maps and some other descriptions and once in a while we'll see some more detailed drawings like what is this here and I keep knocking the camera over um, oh shiners so you can take a look at some differences between the different shiners and whatnot so I guess striped shiners common shiners and whatever so that's kind of the structure of the book there does have all the native fish but it also has if we go toward the back here uh, what page was that on? Somewhere here toward the back, 600. There we go. Also has some non-native fish. So we talked about a lot of the natives. It has uh, some of the non-native cichlid populations that we have down here in Florida. So peacock cichlid, which is the peacock bass, African jewel cichlid. <coughs> Excuse me. Might have cichlid, convict cichlid, and all that sort of thing. And it does also have... Not a lot, but some species like here, um, 
these are more, I guess, saltwater species that do venture into fresh water. So we got like sand flounders here on the bottom, um, southern flounder, starry flounder, hog chucker. So I think there are actually a whole, and I mean like a whole, whole lot more, uh, I guess, brackish water species that venture into fresh water. And this book only covers a very small amount of those, which is um, a little interesting. I'm not sure why they selected these. Maybe these are like the more common ones. But even down here in Florida, there's a lot more species that are found in freshwater. If you remember the book review, Fishes of the Freshwaters in Florida, which I have over here, um, it had listed a whole bunch more that were kind of brackish or that ventured into freshwater once in a while. The Peterson Guide only has... Uh, literally about a handful and then of course you got your acknowledgments your glossary your index that sort of thing so yeah that's going to be uh the peterson guide to freshwater fish of north america north of mexico so let's go ahead and let's wrap this on up all right guys so that's going to do it that was the uh quick little review of the peterson guide to freshwater fishes of North America and North of Mexico. Uh, it's still the best book available out there that covers such a wide area. It is fairly detailed, although it could have some better details, especially in some of the black and white drawings, but it's still the best book you can get out there. So if you're only gonna get one book, or maybe if you're just looking for like a starter book and you don't wanna get into like the more expensive uh, books that deal specifically with the different states, like the uh, just the Florida book is twice as much as this book here. It has a fraction of the species. So each of the state books are a little bit more expensive. Uh, just getting this book is a really, really good starting point, even though it is fairly outdated and not all the species um, that are out there are in here and things like that. But yeah, just a great little starter book. So hope you guys like this video. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you next time.